In this presentation, we will create an invoice where we will be selling an inventory item, a guitar. Let's zoom into it with a zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. Let's go ahead and open up our financial statements this time. We're going to go to our business or, uh, drop or our, our accounting drop down, I should say. We're going to be opening up the balance sheet. That's going to be our favorite report. When that opens up, we're going to be right clicking on the tab up top or on the tab up top. We're going to right click on it and duplicate that tab. So there we have the balance sheet, going to go back to the tab to the left, going to do the same thing for the income statement, the P&L, the profit and loss, going to go to the accounting drop down, select the income statement, going to go to that tab, I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it. I want to do this one more time, this one, this time for the, for the trial balance, because I want to work on and get used to practicing with the good old TB trial balance, the trusty trial. We're going to go down here. Now mine's in the favorites, but yours may not be. So I'm going to go into the reports and then uh, go down to the trial balance. I want to want it to convince you to put it into your favorite reports because you use it so often because it's a, a useful one to have. And then I'm going to right click on the tab up top, duplicate that one. Let's go back over to the balance sheet and change the date. I'm on the balance sheet tab. We're going to be changing the date to 2020. Let's go to the end like January 30, 31st and update that. Now we're going to be doing an invoice here. So the invoice is going to be affecting both the balance sheet and the income statement. It's not going to be affecting cash, but instead receivables. So the receivable is going to go up. The other side is going to be on the income statement. So income statement over here is going to be increasing the sales. We finally have something that's going to happen on the income statement. Then we're going to have sales tax, which is on the balance sheet, which means that there's going to be a liability for the state that makes us give them money on our sales or, you know, we've got to collect whatever on that. And then the other side is going to be the inventory is going to be going down because we're going to sell an actual guitar. And then the cost of the inventory going down is going to be an expense. It's going to be on the income statement for cost of goods sold. So that's going to that's going to be what it looks like. If I go back to the flow chart, just note if we look at our flow chart very quickly, QuickBooks desktop flow chart or in the customer section, we're imagining the selling of a guitar. There's two ways this could happen. Someone could come into our shop where we just sell the guitar outright and create like a sales receipt where we get money at that point in time. Or we're going to basically, we can imagine like shipping them the guitar possibly and we're going to get paid later, we're going to say, right? So we're going to say and that's the case with the invoice. We're going to do the work first. The accounts receivable is going to go up. We expect then to receive a payment later on. When we send the invoice, then AR is going to go up. We're going to receive the payment later on, bringing AR down, accounts receivable, and the other side going to the um, uh, the cash at that point. All right, so let's do this. We're going to then go to the first tab. We're going to be making an invoice. So I'm going to select the drop, the little plus button up top, and we're going to be creating an invoice. So we're imagining someone's ordering the guitar, and we have not yet... Um, give it them to them uh, at this point in time, but I mean, we're going to ship it out and bill them at this point in time, which is an, in essence an invoice. So we're going to say the, the person is going to be Jones Guitars. So that's one of our customers here. And the date we're saying is the 12th. So I'm going to say the 12th is the date. And then we might have a due date, you know, it could be like a month later, depending on the terms of the due date or something like that. So I could say, you know, it's going to be due at, at uh, February 12th, let's say, and then uh, we're going to sell a Gibson USA. So ta Gibson USA, that's the one we want. Description populates for us. I think we're just going to sell one of them. The price is going to be the 380. That's what we sell them for. We're not going to have any discount on it. it. Is subject to sales tax. That is correct. And so there we have it. So as we do this, notice how easy it is to do this now. So the person that does the invoice doesn't really need to know how this all got populated. They just need to know that they sold a Gibson guitar. But now you understand where this is all coming from because it comes from the items to help us to populate. What's going to actually happen? Now let's think about the other side. What's going to happen to the financial statements? Well, it's an invoice. That means the accounts receivable is going to go up. The accounts receivable is going to go up by the full amount, including sales tax of the 41610. The other side is going to be on the revenue, sales, income going up. Uh, that's going to be on the income statement, but it's only going to go up by 380, the amount we get to keep. The difference between the two is the sales tax that the state made us collect, was like a consumption tax that's going to go to them. And that's going to be for the 3610, 9.5% for our practice problem. That's going to be a liability that we're going to have to, to pay to the state. Not only that, but the inventory is going to be going down by some number that's not even on this form 
because this form is going to the client and we don't want to basically or the customer and we don't want them to see the the cost typically but the system knows the cost because it's in there as we generated these the items so it's going to go ahead and calculate the cost decreasing inventory and record on the other side which is on the income statement an expense type of account called cost of goods sold let's check it out we're going to go ahead and approve this and once we approve it uh, we could send it out as as well so we could approve it and then if we wanted to email it uh, we could do our email and we have our, our standard kind of email message here when we do the email let's take a look at the financial statements if i go on over to the balance sheet and refresh the balance sheet i'm going to freshen it on up and then i'm going to hold down control and scroll up to that one two five where we like to be then in the accounts receivable if we go into the ar we should see an increase in the ar accounts receivable for the invoice that we sent out and there it is so there's the uh, 416 notice that's for the full amount if i select that invoice it takes us to the invoice there's the 416. going back then to the balance sheet back here and then back there the other side is going to be on the income statement jumping over to the income statement tab up top and refreshing it finally something's going to appear we got a sale here in this period on the income statement there it is there's the 380. notice it's on there for the merchandise sales but only for the 380 that's not the amount that we collected that's simply the amount that we charged not including the sales tax so if i go back up top then i'm going to go back where's the difference between the two it's what we owe to the state which is back on the balance sheet you would think so if we go back to the balance sheet, it would be a liability because we don't get to keep it. We get we have to pay it to the to the state. So there it is. There's the 36 for 3610 on the sales tax. So if we select that item, we'll see the detail for the 3610 on the sales tax, which is here. And then I'm going to go back up top. We also have the inventory that should be going down because we sold a Gibson guitar. It was like in our warehouse and we sold it. And we have to then decrease the, the inventory then. That's going to be an asset that's going down. So if I go back up to the asset and check that out, we should see a decrease for this guitar that we sold because we're tracking it in the system. So there it is. And it's going down by 304. So the inventory went down by 304 for this invoice, but there's no 304 on this invoice. How did it know? Where did that number come from? Well, if we looked at the items, it would be in this Gibson item. That's where we know that. And then the other side of that, there's got to be another side of that, is on the income statement again. So if we jump on back over to the income statement, and then we have the cost of goods sold, there's the 304 on the other side. What's the effect on net income? Well, well, we sold it for 380, but it cost us 304 that we're expensing now at the point of sale, not the point of purchase, because it's uh, you know we're using kind of an accrual system here. And the difference is the $76, that's the effect on the net income of that particular sale. Note that you could see all that if you go to the trial balance and update the trial balance. It's a lot easier, note, to, to go back and forth and try to figure out all those accounts that are affected by simply finding them on one account without the, all the subtotals in the trial balance. You can't really see the calculation for net income as easily. You could subtract these two out and figure it out but you can see everything on one report so i do recommend getting used to doing so now note we also have some other accounts that could support this the accounts receivable went up so that should be supported by a subsidiary account if i drill down on this receivable it's going to show by date but i want to show by who owes us money so if i go back to the first tab then and we go down to our accounting and we say i want to go to my reports and see if it tracks you know who owes us the money We'd go into the sales side of things, and I'm going to go to the aged receivable. Let's look at the aged receivable detail. So aged receivable detail report. And then if we scroll down, there's, uh, I think, Jones. There's the, the, the one we, I think we just made that one, the 416, right? And then if we were to add all this up, then we have the current and the past due, which adds up to the 20,500 plus the 416.1. That's the 20,916 which you would think would be on here, 20,916 accounts receivable. We also have supporting documentation for the inventory because we're tracking the inventory. Let's check that out. Going back to the first tab, going to scroll back up top. We're going to go to the accounting drop down. We're going to look at those reports, going to the good old reports. This time looking for the purchases side of things. And I want to see something, or I'm sorry, inventory side of things. And I'd like to see the, uh, let's say the inventory item summary. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inventory item summary. 
Scrolling down in this report, we see that we had the sale of uh, the Gibson item. So here's the sale of the Gibson. Here's our opening balance. Here's the cost of goods sold. This being the cost going down. So we can see that this is where the cost number we can see it here. Closing balance then. All the closing balance of all the guitars and whatnot we have at this point is the 2,592. Going back over to the trial balance, that should be supporting this number, 2,592. Listing it out by inventory item by guitar uh, rather than by date basically of transaction as well.